All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about Dead Men's Path by Chinua Achebe. And I'm going to talk about some of the themes, lessons, and questions we are left with as readers after reading the story. So the first theme I want to talk about is tradition versus innovation. The man who represents innovation in this story is Mr. Obi, and he is the young man who is appointed to be the new headmaster of the school. And he's he has very, quote-unquote, progressive ideas that clash with the old ideas held by people in the village. The, the person who represents tradition in this story is Ani, the village priest, and also the village people as a whole kind of represent tradition, and the headmaster, Mr. Obi, is kind of a counter to this. The second theme in this story is the danger of superstition. The village people believe that, that the path between the shrine and their burial place has to be maintained so that their ancestors can visit their descendants after they're dead. And um, they also believe that that path needs to ma be maintained in order for new children to come into the world. And this is a superstition that Mr. Obi obviously doesn't believe in and he thinks it's ridiculous and isn't willing to honor it or, you know, do things that enable that kind of superstition to continue to be believed. Another theme in this story is lack of empathy. Mr. Obi shows a lack of empathy, first of all, with his wife. There's a part in the story where uh, his wife is hoping that that some of Mr. Obi's colleagues will also have wives that will well she wants she wants his colleagues to have wives because she wants those wives to to um, admire her as the wife of the headmaster. But Mr. Obi says that all his colleagues are single. And therefore, his wife won't be able to interact with other wives. And she's very disappointed in that. But Mr. Obi is very happy about that because he says that they can spend more time focused, being focused on their schooling. And so he just doesn't understand why his wife might be upset at the fact that she wouldn't have other wives to interact with now that he has this new position as headmaster in the school. A lesson that we can take from the story is that you should be careful about changing tradition even when you do not understand it. So Mr. Obi decides to close off this path that the village people have walked on for a very long time and he ends up you know, facing some unfortunate consequences. Presumably, the village people come and st and stomp on all the nice flowers that he has outside of the school, and they tear down one of the school buildings because he has closed off this path that was so important to them. And um, you know, we could debate on the the reasonableness of having that path, but I think the the message of the story is that Mr. Obi was not empathetic about the village people's traditions and was not willing to respect them. Now, it could be debated if those traditions ought to have been respected, but that seems to be the message of the story is that Mr. Obi did not respect these traditions and therefore he pays the consequence for it. And the second lesson that I've written down is very similar. Pride be comes before a fall. And this is a common theme, a common lesson in many short stories. I think the author, Achebe, is trying to convey in this story that Mr. Obi is a very arrogant man, or he has arrogance in him. And we see that with when he's interacting with his wife and the way he talks about the older people and 
you know, the village people and their traditions. And he just doesn't show a respect toward tradition. And this ultimately does him in. It, it um, creates a situation where he his school is, you know, is disrespected by the village people. And then when the supervisor comes in to check out the school, the supervisor is very disappointed and gives him a negative review because the school looks like a mess because it is some open questions that we are left with after reading the story who is more stubborn mr obi the school headmaster or the village people and ani the the village priest we've already kind of talked about how mr obi is stubborn he does not he's not open to change he's not open to keeping the tradition he's very closed minded you could say about keeping the path and respecting the tradition on the other hand um he does offer ani the village priest the the option of creating another path outside of his school outside of his school grounds and even offers the help of the children of the kids inside of the school and ani rejects that offer and so it could be argued that both sides are pretty stubborn and there's just an inevitable clash of these two worldviews that are unwilling to to change another question we can have after this story after reading this story is was there really a connection between the path being closed and the woman dying so achebe writes that once the once the path was closed off Two days later, a woman died in childbed, and and the village people obviously take this as a sign that, you know, their ancestors are upset that the path has been closed off, and then they take revenge on Mr. Obi. But that's just an open question. I don't have an answer to it. It depends, you know, what your beliefs are. It's kind of an interesting correlation. Oh, Mr. Obi closes off the path, and now two days later, there's an actual death in the village. So um, maybe the message of the story is perhaps there, there is some truth to what the village people believed about their ancestors. It's just an open question. But those are just some of my thoughts on this story, Dead, Dead Man's Path. If you find this value find this uh, video of value or any of my previous videos, please su please consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link in the description of this video, and I will keep the videos coming about these short stories. Thank you for watching.